Welcome to Primetime Morning. We're in the last half hour of our show and we're going to get to know a mover and shaker of the literary world. <laughs> yep, you can call him a playwright or you can call him a screenwriter. Either way, Robert Sherman is one award-winning author who has done it all. He has not only penned stories for print but also scripts for the screen. We'll get insights from the writer for his formula on writing for different media. And welcome back to the program. Award-winning writer Robert Sherman is best known for his scripting of Doctor Who, a popular British science fiction television program. But the talents of this multifaceted author don't stop there. He's also written for radio and the stage, and his first book, Tiny Deaths, a short story series, garnered the title of Best Collection at the World Fantasy Awards last year. In town to meet his fans as part of the Read Singapore Initiative, Robert tells us how he tackles different mediums and how you too can start a writing career. You too. <laughs> you too. <laughs> Good morning, Welcome Robert. The show. Now, so many mediums. I yeah. mean, TV, radio, short stories, plays. I know. How, how did you? How do you go between them? Well, I I, I was theatre for years. I only did theatre, and I didn't want to do anything else except theatre for years. Mm -hmm. But then I began to find that that writing was so much more exciting if you begin to think, well, let's try other media. Let's try mm -hmm. writing mm -hmm. prose. I never wanted to write prose in my life, I and mean, the idea of writing a book a few years ago would have horrified me. <laughs> but then I just thought, well, you know, th 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 there, was, there was the opportunity to do it, and I thought, let's see if I can give it a go. Yeah. So I did, and it's enormous fun. Did you think it's enormous? More fun than The thing about writing, anyway, which people never ever say, but yeah. it's the biggest, most fun in the world. Yeah. And, it's, and it's a very easy job as well, because you, you, <laughs> you, you, have, you have your own hours, you have no boss, yeah. you haven't ever got to wear a suit to work, you can stay in bed till noon, it's okay, wonderful. Okay, you sold me now, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, hey, I'm quitting. <laughs> you get this idea that writers are quite tortured and angstful, and in fact, you know, we, we, we all give that impression because we sort of feel rather guilty okay. about yeah, how much guilty. fun we have. And also you're trying to ward <laughs> off terrific. all the competitors as well, that's what exactly you're trying to do. Exactly right, we're trying to get rid of them all. <laughs> so, I mean, okay, did your background in writing scripts, I mean, help when you're writing your prose? I mean, do you find you're able to think of the dialogue easier? Or? I try to avoid dialogue, mm -hmm. as, I think as a result, I think because I spent so many years just writing dialogue and stage directions, when I came to writing prose, I thought, let's just try and move do off from that and okay. just try and write things which actually no one ever says a word. I don't always do that, but I, but I try and make it much more sort of chatty and conversational. Okay. It's, it's good okay. fun. So um, a book in which no one ever says a word. Uh, yes. Are there many words in this book? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I, sometimes they sort of hint at them. No, I mean, I, mean, I mean, obviously sometimes you sort of do have to resort to people having yeah. conversations. But I, you see, but I always think it's actually quite fun to explore those things where people just don't really talk to each other. Mm -hmm. um, that is, that's what I always find. Is that sort of right. your, your style of writing? In terms of, or is this something you chose sort of Yeah, it's, 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 it's the way in which you sort of try and explore the sort of gaps between what people say. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing on stage, though. I mean, you know, the, the part of the fun thing about writing theatre is you always have people on stage never quite saying what they mean. Okay. Mm -hmm. People saying what they mean is very, very boring. But the subtext... It's, it's always some yeah, sort of... Exactly. Right. 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 So this little book, it's called... Well, it's not little. It's just called Tiny Death. Tiny Death. And it's about, I mean, here are the it says alien intelligence, reincarnation, imaginary children, conversations yes. with Hitler's childhood pet. That's right. How do you come up with your ideas? Well, I just sort of walk around a lot. Um, <laughs> it's that one thing, though, it is, is that really it was trying to sort of find ways of writing about very, very real life issues mm -hmm. from a sort of slightly sideways point of view. Okay. So that with, so, so, so that with you know, having a dog who was Hitler's childhood pet, I wanted to try and find a way of why anyone would buy into those awful things. Mm -hmm. And I thought, well, everybody likes talking animals. And yeah. if you had a talking animal, you know, rather like Disney, telling you all these terrible things, you'd yeah. probably listen a bit more easily. So it was yeah. trying to find ways of trying to deal with, you know, with, 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 with things that everyone actually might try and find quite, quite urgent, mm -hmm. but in a rather silly, hopefully quite flippant point, but it's a, you know, sort of it's way, way to get under people's yeah, skin absolutely that Absolutely right, yeah. yeah. So does that mean all the crazy stuff that happens in the book actually has a really serious message behind it? Well, sometimes serious, but, but, but hopefully real. I mean, I, I think there's actually nothing worse in the world than a bunch of stories which just seem so silly and absurd that they have nothing to relate to. Mm -hmm. I think everything I write, at least I'm trying to make it, so that, so that people read it and say, oh, I see, that's about marriage, mm -hmm. or that's about death, or that's about families. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's never just trying to be silly for the sake of it. Okay. So do you think writers, I mean, writers like you are primarily interested in human relationships? I, mean, I like, think so. Like, what, what, yeah. what fascinates you there? What, what do you try and really convey? Do you think it can be conveyed completely well mm -hmm. in prose? Well, 
I think it's, as I say, I think it's those gaps between people. The fact that we know that all, all of us deep down are, are extremely complex people, and yet so complex that we'll never quite understand each other at all. Mm -hmm. And therefore, we never quite get there. I, I, I think that, you know, it doesn't matter whether you're married to somebody for, for 40 years, you never necessarily understand what's going on in their heads. Mm -hmm. And all of our attempts to try and do that, I think, are quite funny. <laughs> and we, you know, because, because we never quite make it work, and I yeah. think that that's always but, interesting. But that's well, that's what keeps it going, too. because if yeah. you knew everything about the person right well, now, then right. I mean, the relationship I mean, would kind of end. I mean, I still find my wife fascinating, because I've no idea what she thinks about anything at all. <laughs> so, so, so every morning I get up and I think, what, what's she on about now? I've, I, I've absolutely Is no idea. Is she watching this? <laughs> no, she isn't. She, oh, that's she, what she, you she's think. back in England and she can't <laughs> get this. So that's right. It's, so it, it's okay for me to say it. That's okay, well, we've talked about your unique writing... Style, style. <laughs> of course, which is of no help at all to all new writers out there. No, perhaps <laughs> not. <laughs> but so, uh, do you have some tips for budding writers out there? I mean, how, yeah. how did you start off? Well, I began because I was incredibly shy as, sh shy as a child. And I, and I had a stammer, and I began just writing words down, because that was an easier way for, for me to, to, you know, to try and talk to people. Mm -hmm. And it just sort of stuck. And mm -hmm. what that taught me was just to be fairly confident about writing. I think most people who try and write suffer because they then get scared of doing it. I mean, there are more half-finished novels lying in people's drawers at home than mm -hmm. finished ones. I think there are so many novels which are actually out there on the shelves, but, there are, but everyone believes deep down, I think, that they could write a story. Mm -hmm. And then they get scared of doing it. And my advice, basically, is finish. It doesn't matter if it's any good or not to start with. Just finish writing something. People always give up. There's right. always a better reason not to write. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, like watching television or going on the internet. Just, just carry on with it. And once you've actually achieved it, even if it's rubbish, you will think, I actually wrote a novel. And then your mm -hmm. next one's better. And for me, I just kept on going. I mean, I kept on just sort of ploughing on through. And so better to start writing a novel or better a short story? Because that seems uh, to be very fashionable it, it, it can be anything. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, it can be poetry, it can be drama. Anything which actually makes you feel that you're saying how, how you know, Mm -hmm. How you feel as, as a person. There's a, there's a blog and So, uh, there's a blog. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. and actually, I think that's, I think that's actually what's going here. on. I think people are going on the internet now yeah. and they're writing live journal or even Facebook updates and, they, and they're actually taking some sort of pride in writing good Facebook updates. Mm. I, I have a friend who spends ages, he spends about four or five <laughs> hours before going on Facebook and saying, I've got a very, very witty one today. Oh. And, <laughs> and, and that's a form of writing and that's a form yeah. of pride. Yeah. You know? mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that's really what I think what you know what it all comes down to is mm -hmm. just it's just actually having fun with it and it, it, it's only words the thing i always try and tell young writers when i meet them is no one has ever yet died because i've written a bad story i've written many many bad stories <laughs> yeah. but no one as far as i know has actually suffered that much from it okay so, not that you know <laughs> okay. of. not that I mean, you know <laughs> possibly two or three I mean, but but you know right. you know really really small numbers of people have suffered do you think that the internet like you're talking about blogs and facebook mm. has changed the face of writing i mean do you think that it's a good or bad thing i think it's a sense? great thing i yeah. think people are i think people feel far more comfortable with the idea of sitting at a keyboard mm -hmm. i think people actually find that the idea of just writing to somebody writing emails or just writing updates on what they're doing and of course, sometimes that's awful, but then they begin to get used to it and they begin to realise that if they want to express themselves better, mm. write better. And then of course it just becomes a natural process. I think for a lot of people the idea of writing felt like something you, you did at school. It's a pain with and a pen. And now it's something yeah. that people yeah. do every day because yeah. everybody has a computer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so are you the kind of guy who gets inspired, sits down and says, I'm feeling great today, you crank out something, yeah. 20 pages, Absolutely. and then... I mean, another yes. day you sit down and nothing. Some and days I do nothing at all. Yeah. Right. Yeah, how do you do? How do you deal with the, I mean, what they call writer's block? I mean, what's the best way to get around it for you? Uh, try and surprise yourself. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I had a bad case of it for about a year as well. I mean, I think God, I was believed it never really existed, and I just and I and I wrote that book as a way out of it. I've been mm -hmm. writing drama for so many years, and I thought I'll try something different. You just try and catch yourself a little bit. Off, like, off so guard. Shake up your brain yeah. a little yes, bit. Yes, exactly. And, yeah. and, and again, stop being scared of it. And mm -hmm. it's hard not to be sometimes, but just find a way back into it. Okay. Yeah. So I guess hard work, as you yeah. see, really Robert is about putting his fears uh, absolutely. Yes. fingers to the computer. Fantastic. Anyway, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you very much indeed. It's very kind.
And that was Robert Sherman, award-winning author in this book. I mean, I'm very... I think I'm going to steal it. But yeah, <laughs> he's right here in front of us, so he can still hear you. But, yeah, he can. <laughs> awesome anyway. tips on how you too, if you're a budding writer, can, uh, you know, sort of kickstart that writing habit. That's right. Well, okay. we've got to wrap up Primetime Morning for this Monday, but of course, tomorrow we've got another exciting show. We've got... That's right, Amy so, Mann. Yeah. I interviewed her over the weekend. I'll be airing that interview. She was a very funny person for someone who wrote such tragic love songs, but we'll talk more about the that. The irony in life. <laughs> Meantime, news continues in Chinese Asia. You have yourself a good day. Take have care. a good one. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Thank you. Thank you.